Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to be reviewing the DeWalt DCCS620 20 volt cordless chainsaw. I had to come over here to get out of the wind. Today was supposed to be an extremely calm day, but they, they lied again. All right, I have oil in this, and tensioning the chain, you just unlock it, tighten or loosen it, and you're good to go. And that's about how I like it right there. Um, check this. This is your chain guard, and that appears to be working just fine. So I have trees down all over the place. I got a couple right here. I have one on top of the fence and I have several across the road down here. I'm gonna try to get all of them cut with this little saw. We'll see how that goes. And what I have for batteries is this big old flex volt. I never used this yet. And this five amp hour battery that I've been using for a couple of years. This is 60 volt max, 6 amp hour. So I'm going to try it with this first and let's go cut some stuff. Okay, seems simple enough. It's got a lockout right here. You have to push that in to get the trigger to work, which is a nice little safety feature. Push that in. It just sounds so weird. It's gonna be kind of hard to see. You could see that bubble right there. This is full of oil and it has a little hash mark down here. That's when you're supposed to fill it. I've been kind of worried about that because on a normal chainsaw, whenever you fill the gas tank, you fill the oil and you're never going to run out of oil as long as you do that every time because the gas tank is always going to run out before the oil runs out. With this, you just have to keep checking and hopefully I'll remember to do that. All right, let's go try cutting some stuff. Okay, all right, the first problem we have, and I haven't looked at this really well, but it doesn't appear too bad. Yeah, it looks like I could just pick that up and toss it away. It's just that one stick on top of here, but I'm going to get in here and cut this up a little bit, toss everything over the fence, and then we have some bigger stuff to do that away. Okay, that was easy. One down, four or five to go.
Okay, here is where we run into problems. This, I don't know, that's maybe six or seven inches around. It says that that saw is good up to 10 inches, so I should be able to dice this up. This will make some good firewood. But the problem lies with this. As soon as this is cut, this is going to spring up. It's under tension. Kind of hard to see what's holding it down. Besides, yeah, it's this right here. <sighs> see, if I stand back here and cut this, and then this pushes that up. Actually, if I cut it from... If I cut it from this side. Yeah, you can't just cut this because it's going to fly straight up. I want to leave as much of that stuff on as possible to get hooked up. And then take my time cutting it. What is it? It's a slippery elm, I think. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is a total mess here. But once I get that tree that's in tension out of the way, I'll go in here and dice some of this up. This will make some real nice saw logs for the fireplace. And I'll cut some of that one up as well. But the main thing is getting this road open. And then we have a small one right there as well. All right, let me think on this one and then we'll get this untrapped. Okay. I got this branch out of the way and a couple of these little side branches. What I'm going to do is just cut it right up here. Just stand right here, cut it there. This will want to just fall down and that will go upwards. Should be no problem. Then I'll have free access to this stuff. Okay, that went exactly as predicted. Now, what I think I'm going to do, looks like this log right here is holding this up real nice for me. I don't know how much I want to go in there. It's kind of nasty in there. But I should get as much of this log as I can. I mean, it's a full tree of really nice dry wood. So... And I do want to test out the saw as much as possible. One thing I've noticed about this so far, well, it just seems kind of weird because of the noise that it makes. Not using a whole lot of oil, which is good. Hopefully it's, yeah, it's oiling all right. That's good. Um, but one thing I've noticed about this is that the RPM seems like it's a lot slower than a gas saw, which may or may not be. It's just really hard to tell with the different noise that this makes. All right, let's get in there and start cutting the end of that thing. That was a lot of wood. And we are at one bar on this battery. I'm not sure if that'll show. Yeah, that should show. One bar, and you can notice that it's slowing down. 
I still have the biggest tree left to go, but it's a single tree. I'm thinking I can get it done with that other battery. Let's get this wood loaded up and back down to that tree and see what this other battery will do. Okay, this log is a little bit bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Trying to find out what's going on with this thing. The butt is right there, and it kind of looks like that is sitting on a stump. And it's flat on the ground to here. I'm wondering if I can get on this far end and hopefully dice it all the way up to the middle somewhere and then I can get back here with the big chainsaw and handle the rest. All right that's my plan. I got a new battery in that and I'll make my first cut down there from behind that tree. Can't swing at me or anything and then we'll work it from there. Okay, that's it for my batteries. Both batteries are dead. I changed, or not changed, but filled the oil twice. Once it was half empty, once it was down to the quarter line. There's a little hash mark down here at a quarter of a tank, which is where you're supposed to fill it. So that's kind of roughly like a gas saw. All in all, for such a tiny little saw, with an electric motor, it did one hell of a good job. What did I do? I did either two or three trees up there. I believe it was two. And then this monster right here. And this was a bit punky at the far end. You can kind of see on that log and that log. Not all the way, but a little punky around the side. But as we got over here, this is hard as a rock. This is white ash and it's seasoned for, I don't know, five years maybe, four or five years. Really hard stuff. And it did a pretty good job on it. If I were to do this again, I would just bring more batteries. 
Um, it was dying on me. I would make a cut and then it wouldn't start. And I don't know if that was because it was overheating or if it was because the batteries were almost dead. They were both down to one bar. Where is that? Right here. And still are. But I have a couple more of these 5 amp hour batteries. I think I'm going to head up and get rid of all this stuff and bring down a fresh battery and just finish that cut and make one more cut and that'll pretty much do it. And then the rest of that log, I can wait till I have the big chainsaw and do that. Okay, let's go get rid of this wood, get a fresh battery, finish the job, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this. Okay, I have two new batteries. This one has three bars. This one doesn't have an indicator, but I think this should do it. I just need to get two cuts done, I believe. Well, maybe I'll get three done. We'll see if it'll do it. Okay, I came back down here just to make them two cuts and I got a little carried away. This is all the stuff I cut on this last trip and the battery is not dead. It's down to one bar and it was still cutting. I probably could have got at least one more cut done. Can't tell you for sure, but I believe so. And that's the stuff from last time. Come get that at some other point. This is really a nice little saw. I'm not sure exactly what you would use it for. The chain that comes with it is a little too aggressive for a limbing saw. It actually works better on these big logs. So I would keep this around for doing just what I did, clearing the roads and clearing the fence signs. I mean, you can do a whole bunch of work with this, especially if you have a bunch of batteries like I do. I have three of these five amps and well, I took it back up there but I have one of those six amp batteries and you basically could cut for hours with that one battery basically is one tree so not too bad if you have a big chunk of land like we do we have 35 acres but it goes like straight down the bluff and then back up the other side so it's a lot more ground than if you had 35 acres on the flat so we got quite a bit of land here and we got probably a half mile of roads that we got to tend. So at any given time, there's always going to be a tree or two down on a road somewhere. So this would actually work for that. But if you got a little bigger in diameter than what these are, it's just not going to hack it. So you would absolutely need an 18 or 20 inch saw. They make an 18 inch model. I'm not sure what the numbers are, but 
they do make an 18 inch model and I'm not sure if it has a bigger motor or what the deal is but at any rate it's a real good saw for its size and it uses the batteries that I have around anyways. All right, I'm gonna take this stuff back up and I will wrap this up up there. Okay, that's gonna wrap this up. What an awesome little saw. So I started off over in the pasture there. I did real little over there. Then I cut the tree right down here and tossed all that stuff into the woods. Then there was two trees. One was an apple and one was an ash. And that's this right here. And then we had the big tree, which was an ash. And this is what I cut on the second cut. And the first cut is still down there. So once this is split and the stuff that's down there is brought up and split, that is going to be about a half a face cord, which is about a quarter of the wood that we use for a winter. All right, I was just interrupted by the neighbor girl who is missing a tooth. She was eating Cheerios and it popped right out. So like I said, the wood that I cut today is about a quarter of our heating needs for the entire winter, which is pretty cool. If you already have a bunch of DeWalt tools around and you have a bunch of batteries, you should be able to get the vast majority of anything that you need to get cut done with this exact saw. And these logs right there are proof. As far as durability goes, I really have no idea. This is just the first cut. So if you stick with the channel, I'll be using this all summer cutting trees in the Oak Savannah Restoration Project back here. I have a ton of trees to cut. Most of them are this size. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.